Not everybody wants to buy a big four Japanese bike. Actually, when you fly to other markets, you see all kinds of different markets and even significantly different models from familiar brands. Not everyone is into the same thing. Also, regulations and regional tastes in motorsports affect what is sold on the open market. So enjoy a trip to the unfamiliar and let's ride. 10. Hiasung 650. If quality dumpster diving is a thing, this is the best example. A fine bike from the last part of the 1990s. It's no longer state of the art and the buyers don't care. It uses the excellent powertrain from the Suzuki SV650 sport bikes. These go out the door at $6,500 retail and since they sit around during the pandemic, expect $4,800 cash to be considered a serious offer. 9. Motochiz E1 PC Electric Race Bike Despite the death of founder Michael Chiz in 2016, these bikes are still being maintained and possibly built to this day. The company does have a physical address with pictures, but no website. It is claimed that the Moto Chiz E1 PC has 10 times the battery capacity of a Toyota Prius and 2.5 times the torque of a Ducati 1198. It is powered by 10 individual lithium polymer cells that each weigh 19.5 pounds and produce 12.5 kilowatt hours. 8. Hesketh Sonnet and 124. Most people thought when Lord Hesketh retired that was the end of their motorcycle lines, which consisted of one basic platform with different iterations over the years. Actually, the company started buying large displacement SNS manufactured X wedge engines on fully modern platforms. One model is already available with a supercharger, but that is hardly necessary as the engine design is only a decade old, and at 1900 to 2100 CCS, these things are beasts. The chassis is the best of a Norton Loop frame type with custom everything. Other models have hidden monoshocks. But Hesketh always builds retro-style bikes, that is their niche. 7. Gas Gas Trials Bike This is actually two series of bikes with different engine sizes. Both are agile competition bikes for crossing rocks, hills, cliffs, and water. Called the TXT Racing and TXT GP lines, with the GP having few carbon fiber bits, a little different tune on the two cycle engines, and a slight upgrade on the tunability of the suspension. These are not their only series, but the seatless trials bikes are what most people are most familiar with. Although this brand is mostly used and sold for top level off-road riders, they are available to the public. The TXT GP bike only weights 166 pounds, plus or minus depending on the engine size ordered. 6. Italjet Dragster 200 Okay, technically, this is the most awesome and technologically advanced scooter in the world, not a motorcycle. Don't wince, we'd all ride one if we could get our hands on one. Just look at the craftsmanship. The Dragster has been around off and on for quite a few years, but it gets better with each iteration. I mean how cool is a single-sided front swing arm mounted to a trellis frame? At 20 HP you can actually cross town on the highway, we just wouldn't recommend it for intercontinental transport. Yes, of course, it has DOHC and that's why it makes that kind of power. 5. Horex VR6 with an inline 6 1,200 cubic centimeters engine making 163 HP but only as wide as an air-cooled four-cylinder, this thing is a rocker. Carbon fiber trim and anodized everything complemented unique aluminum rims with steel spokes this bike is a looker. It's also unique in the fact that it has three camshafts. The bike comes in three flavors, raw, classic, and an upswept pipe version called the Cafe Racer. 4. Sax Madass Scooter in Road. At the time of this writing, Satch's website is down, so it may be another victim of the pandemic, but for our purposes, we'll act as if the company is doing fine. 
Okay, at 49 cubic centimeters and 125 cubic centimeters, this is more urban and yacht-borne transportation, but unlike the famous Honda Trail series, this thing doesn't look 50 years old. It has the typical German feel of quality. Saks also makes a cool model that is called Zrode, which is a light-duty motored on slash off-road bike in 125 and 250 cc. If you like minimalist looking bikes that have nice frames, these are cool rides. 3. Bimota Tessie H2 Kawasaki rescued the bankrupt boutique brand of insanely fast rich guy bikes. Once the parts were assembled for all the bikes contracted before the company went bust and the other models sold off, Bimota and Kawasaki decided to go the MOAB route and put the most powerful motorcycle engine ever put into a production cycle stripped from the Kawasaki Ninja H2 and put it into the lightest high-tech chassis mankind could dream of. The forkless Tessie series has been around since 1990, but it never had more than 125H.P, and any version and most were under 100, and let's be honest half of the buyers will be experimenting with more boost from the blower, so expect these on the street with 300 plus HP. 2. Kajava Mito and Elephant Like all good Italian manufacturers, Kajiva is familiar with being in and out of bankruptcy regularly, and since Harley-Davidson dumped MV Augusta in the last decade because they were making a profit on sport bikes, MV picked themselves up and said, hey little wannabe Ducati, need a lift? So expect to see 2021 Mitos and Elephants. In the past in certain countries, you would see the elephant labeled as a Ducati, and the Mitos were simply a 125C.C. version of the 916-996 with a regular frame around the single cylinder engine. Maybe they'll bring back their great MX bikes as well? 1. Norton V4RR and Atlas Ranger Yep, you guessed it, another dead brand has come back to life. Honestly, we weren't too excited about the modernized retro Norton Commandos that had great new chassis but stroke 360 degrees parallel twins that shake more than an old Ironhead Sportster. This thing however is more like a blue pill at midnight. We're talking a 200 plus HP. Carbon Fiber Beast. Can you feel it? Other words that might make you want one are things like slipper clutch, titanium valves, fly-by-wire. Even the seat comes at sewn from fine cloth. The Atlas Ranger is a cool 650 cubic centimeter scrambler that would be a perfect match for the low-tech Ducati scrambler and to be honest it's a better looking bike than the Italian or Japanese counterparts.